Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question from Richard Mogford. Uh, he is AE6XO. Okay, and his question has to do with antenna tuners. He says, I am interested in your discussion about antenna tuners. I have not been able to figure out if they are equal to having a resonant antenna. That is, why bother with resonant antennas if we can use a multiband antenna with an antenna tuner? Um, okay, um, let's take a look at that. Let's, uh, the, the question is resonant versus non-resonant antennas and what's good about them. Uh, there are both used in ham radio. A non-resonant antenna requires a tuner. Some non-resonant antenna tuners, for example, like if you have a 43-foot vertical, 43-foot vertical, here's the ground, you're, you're going to have to have a gazillion radials with that thing uh, around it. And the thing is so far out of tune that down at the bottom you have the antenna and here's the ground and all the radials connect to here you have to have a tuner it's uh, an, an auto tuner obviously and it goes and attaches from here and to here all right and then this goes to the shack the reason that the tuner has to be right at the antenna is because the SWR is so high that if you were to use a regular feed line between here and your tuner in your shack, the losses in the feed line would be very high. Here's a little known fact. Um, this is going to be discussed in the December issue of Ask Dave and QST. That, um, SWR, when it's high, means that there's more loss in the antenna. And here's how that works. If you've got a tuner here, that says tuner, and here is a length of line, and you have a bad SWR here. You send some energy out here, it's going to reflect a lot of energy back. Okay, the tuner catches that and sends it back to here. And so you're constantly playing catch between the uh, antenna and the tuner. And that energy just keeps going back and forth. So the current uh, that is in the antenna, uh, you've got the forward and reflected currents. And each time, you remember that... Um, um, e equals I squared R, I, I, no, P equals I squared R. So as the power goes up, because the current goes up, note it goes up because of the square of the current. Okay, we could derive that, but you can too, from Ohm's law. Um, the, the thing about this is when the current starts bouncing back and forth, it gets squared multiplied by the ohmic resistance in the cable. And this is power is heat. It's sent away as heat, okay? So in a situation like the 43-foot vertical, you have to connect the tuner very close so that the transmission line is so short that the high currents between the antenna with a bad SWR and the tuner is so short that you don't get any significant heating here. And then the tuner, this has got some resistance and it's got some uh, reactants okay in there and the reactance is what causes the current to flow back and then this has um, essentially a conjugate match here that's a minus sign there don't worry about what that means it means that it's the opposite so 
reactive current coming this way hits this, goes back this way, and so on. Eventually, most of it is radiated, but you do lose some heat here. If you have this very short, less than a foot, you're going to get very little heat lost. Okay? And then you've got your 50 ohm coax over here, and there's usually a ground rod here. Okay? And then that goes back to your station ground rod where you attach where you attach your uh, lightning arresters, okay? This works with a non-resonant antenna. If you get the tuner very close to the antenna, you won't get very much milliwatts lost in the feed line because the feed line is so short, okay? Now, we do use a lot of other non resonant antennas. There's a classic, the Carolina Wyndham or whatever it is. You've got this 100 foot long piece of uh, wire. You break it in the middle with some ladder line uh, and then a tuner. Have to use a tuner with this because it's not resonant. The purpose of the tuner is to, and uh, transmatch is a better uh, no, uh, name for it. This is 50 ohms at a phase angle of zero. Okay, that's a zero. Okay, phase angle is zero. This is a transformer. And then you have this input impedance, which is some unknown R plus some unknown reactive component. Um, if this is too long, uh, the reactive component is um, inductive. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee that. Okay. But now if you use open wire line, let's say 450 ohms, okay, you've got a radiator here and note that Z equals 450 equals the ratio of the voltage to the current. Okay, so in 450 ohm line the current is one ninth that of this case here with the, or this case here with the coax, one ninth. So that means you have one ninth of the current. And then when you look at I squared R, P, this will be the loss, I squared R, okay, you're gonna square one ninth and come up with one over 81. So that will be the power lost normally in a 50 ohm line will be cut by a factor of 81. Okay. You ask, why don't we use open wire line for everything? Well, we certainly could. But the 50 ohm coax is convenient because all the RF stays inside the coax if it's done right, whereas there's a little bit of field on either side of this. And if you really do the mathematics, you'll find out that the power is centered in between the two lines. It's a so-called pointing vector, which is the power vector, okay? So this is why we use open wire line. It drops the current dramatically from, if this is one amp, this would be one ninth of an amp. And in this, equation here, you're going to use um, I squared, um, do I have that right, equals IR, power equals EI, equals, um, take put the E and you're going to get I squared R, okay. The current goes down by a factor of 81. So Not sure if that's right. The power dissipated here 
uh, is going to be it's the voltage over the current so as the current goes down the voltage goes up okay that far is right um, let's skip the part where we take the 81 in there and take that out of there So we'll start here. Um, so we see that the current is one ninth of what it was before. So if you put a nine in here and uh, square that, that's one over 81 times the power that you've got over here. There's significantly less power lost in uh, a 450 ohm window line. Uh, to here. So that means that you can put the tuner down here because you're not going to lose that much power in this line. Then you can have a non resonant antenna down here, knowing that there's going to be a lot of give and take here. Now, let's talk about tuners. The question that he brought up was, why bother with resonant antennas if we can use a multiband antenna with an antenna tuner? First of all, there's a bit of a misnomer here, multiband. A multiband antenna. Technically, if you look at the spectrum, and here's 3.5, here's 7, here's um, 14, here's uh, 28. Okay. A multiband antenna, SWR, is going to look like this. Okay, and so it has an SWR dip at the ham bands. That's a multiband antenna. Okay, now something like that Wyndham that I was telling you about, which is, you know, there's lots of different people who try and use this sort of antenna. Just uh, and split it in half right here, feed it with the ladder line, okay? This can be really any length. A hundred feet is common, okay? You will have to use a tuner. Uh, you will not be able to make any part of this coax. Don't try and put a ballon in here and run it with coax because the actual resistance and the reactance will change with frequency up here. So if you put a ballon in here, let's say a 4 to 1 ballon, and you've got coax and a 4 to 1 ballon, this is 50 ohms, this is 200 ohms. It won't work because every time you change frequency, the R will change a lot, the X will change a lot. You need to bring the um, ladder line all the way down to the tuner. So, to answer your question in short, uh, Richard, um, the, uh, to answer your question in short, uh, yes, you can do either. You can do a resonant or a non-resonant antenna. If you're going to do a non-resonant antenna, make sure that it isn't so bad that you end up needing to put the antenna right at the base of the antenna, okay? Um, some of the uh, Japanese manufacturers offer, like Yesu offers, a mobile antenna with a uh, antenna tuner right at the base. Okay, and that works fine. And then you feed that with 50 ohm coax. My preference, my personal preference, is to feed the um, antenna in such a way that the antenna is resonant, thus you limit the amount of heating in the coax, and then I don't need to use a tuner at all. There's a little tuner in the ICOM 7300 that will touch up slight mistuning up to 3 to 1 SWR. Uh, if you use a non-resonant antenna, you must have a wide-range antenna tuner in addition to your radio. Don't use the tuner and the radio at the same time as the external tuner, they'll fight each other and you can get some very high currents and start to smell smoke and so on. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. Uh, our next giveaway is a uh, giveaway number three is a BITX, uh, micro BITX um, 
from India that is version 6. It's a very nice little radio, comes uh, single sideband and CW. And uh, I'll throw in the microphone that came with it. I'll also throw in a power cable for it. It's got power pole connector on one end and then the correct connector for the radio. So to enter into that, you send a letter via snail mail to Dave Kassler, KE0OG at P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And uh, you can send a QSL card, a postcard, or a single piece of paper in an envelope. And I need your name, call sign, and uh, your shipping address and your phone number in case I have problems. I don't need your email address. And at the end of the drawing, all of the entries will be destroyed. Okay. And the winning entry will be sent with the radio to the winner. So I don't keep any uh, information on that. So there you have it. Um, please subscribe. Please click like. Do all those wonderful things that feed the YouTube algorithm. And until we next meet, 73.